this is lesson one of data analysis. And what you're going to be learning to do is you're going to be learning to read uh, pictographs and bar graphs. So first of all, this is a bar graph. And uh, so here are some parts of a bar graph that you need to be aware of. So first of all, there's always a title for a bar graph and it tells you what that bar graph is about. Okay, um, the next thing that you need to know is for parts of a bar graph is that it always has numbers to let you know how many um, the bars are up to. So you, you use the numbers on the side and how high, high the bars are to tell um, how, what the number is for that. And then you also need to make sure that each one of these bars is labeled so that we know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, this should also be labeled, each one of these. So this one should tell you, uh, you sh there should be something written saying, um, this is how many students, the number of students, and maybe this is their favorite color. Okay, so it should have the labels. This one doesn't, uh, but I chose it because of the rest of the stuff and how clear it is. Okay, um, last thing, oh, I already said that, but what we use bar graphs for, is um, to show a picture of the data collected. So we use it's, it's for using um, just like a visual to show what the data that's been collected um, in the form of bars. Okay, and then so our, our title is students favorite color. So I guess that this should say uh, number of students and this should say uh, color or favorite color. But this one doesn't. Okay, so that's a bar graph. And if we go down, we've got pictograph and so a pictograph uses pictures to show the data collected so it goes one step further with the visual the uh, bar graph is to show visual but it's also uh, to show or yeah that's it it's just to show visual so the pictograph gives you a visual but it's also um, uses pictures all as well. So it's just a little bit of a different way. You could display the same data on either graph and it would work. So parts of a pictograph that you need to be aware of is there's also always a title to tell you what it's about. In this case, number of ice cream cones sold. Um, you also need to make sure that you have labels. So this section is labeled with names. Usually we would put it along this side, but sometimes not. Um, so we've got the names of people here, and this is important because it tells you what each one of these re ice cream cones represents. If we didn't have that, then we would just know how many they sold in total, but not who sold how many. And the last really important thing about a pictograph is uh, the key that tells you how many or what uh, one of the pictures is worth. So usually they're not each worth one ice cream cone. Um, in this case, there were three ice cream cones. Okay, so that means that Rachel has one, two ice cream cones on her chart, but each one of these ice cream cones is worth three. So that means that there's three, six. Rachel sold six ice cream cones. Anna would have sold nine ice cream cones. You can use your multiplication, one, two, three, four, five. Sydney, five times three, could, could have sold 15 ice cream cones. And then Destiny, she only sold three ice cream cones. That's how you would read one of those, okay? So it's just to display data. So data collecting, like who's favorite something or how many you did or something. Um, it's pretty straightforward. But let's, let's go to the back and we'll practice reading some bar graphs. Okay, so first of all, we're looking at <clears throat> soccer goals. And how I can tell that, sorry, just over here, is there is the title, Soccer Goals. Okay, we've got a port so that I can write. Um, and what we need to pay attention to when we're reading our bar graphs is, so we look at the picture, and then we need to figure out what each picture represents. And this key, it's, it tells you extra details. Uh, sometimes it'll only tell you that like a soccer ball is worth 10, but this one even does the math for you and tells you that half of 10 is five. But um, in your math, you'll probably have to figure that out yourself. Okay, and the question is, how many goals did the players score in all? So what we need to do in this case is figure out how many each one scored and then add it all up. 
And I'm guessing that this would be in a season, not in a game, because this is a lot of goals. But, so we can start, start skip counting by tens. We've got 10, 20, 30, 40, and then there's five. So Kylie did 45 goals. Sebastian did 10, 15. Vanessa did five, and so did George. Adrian got 10, 20, 30, 35 goals. And Cecilia got 10, 20, 30, 40, 45 goals, just like Kylie. Okay, so now we figured out what each one did. Now we can add them all up. So we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then uh, we've got 4, that's 7, 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, 15. So that means that the players, oh, okay, we can do that. They scored 150 goals all together. Okay, other things that we could uh, talk about in this graph would be uh, who scored the most goals, which would be Cecilia and Kylie, who scored the least goals, Vanessa and George. Um, you could do how many goals did girls score or boys based on the name, you could figure it out. Okay, so that's that one. Now if we go below, we'll look at a bar graph. Can't see that. There we go. So you try this one on your own first and then play it. Um, you have to answer these two questions based on this bar graph. So that's all I'm going to give you until you're finished. So pause now. Okay. So we're looking at our favorite sports and we've got number of students. So somebody must have su surveyed some students. And then the options were soccer, softball, basketball, or something else. Maybe ultimate frisbee. <laughs> um, you'll notice that they do have the labels, like I said, you need it. So number of students is here, sports is here. We've got our title, which is important. We've got our bar graphs. Okay, it's not, it, they don't necessarily need to be different colors like this, but it's fun if you want to do that. Uh, but anyways, it says, based on this bar graph, what is the most favorite sport? Okay. So, which, which bar is the highest? I think it's obvious. So, that means that the favorite sport is soccer. Okay, and next one, how many students were surveyed all together? So, we're doing kind of what we did up there. Uh, soccer, we've got, but we, we don't get to look at the uh, shapes this time. Now, we have to look at the line. So we've got zero and then it's just labeled two, four, six, eight, but everyone in between is the number in between. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So that means that this one's right between eight and nine or eight and ten. So it makes it nine. Softball is right at four. Basketball is at six. And other is at five. Notice how I drag my finger across to make sure that I'm at the right a line. That's what those lines are for, so that you can drag your finger across. Make sure that you're on the right spot. Um, <clears throat> so now we just need to um, add those all up. So we've got 4 plus 6 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 9 is 24. So that means that 24 students were surveyed. all together. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward lesson. It probably won't take you very long. But if you do need help, then uh, go back and watch the video again. <laughs>